All right, guys, so the first thing that we're gonna do is take a look at our plugins, the chain leader and the chain follower, and answer that question in your mind of why do we need two plugins? Well, let's start with the leader. We're gonna put it on our first track, this is a vocal track. If I'm gonna die tonight, I'm so we're starting by putting a leader on this vocal, and we're just gonna add something simple like Pro Q. Make a little curve here. Just do a little low cut. Now we add a follower to our second track. We link it to group A, and we're gonna see that now it has Pro Q as well, and it's got the exact same curve. And in fact, we can even play around with it and see that both of them are moving at the same time. So that is the magic of the leader and the follower. The follower is always gonna follow the leader that's attached to the same group as itself. In this case, group A. So let's make a real vocal chain, something that we would use. Uh, we want Pro Q, sure that's good. Shave off a little bit of the bottom, add a little sizzle to the top. We're probably gonna want some compression. So let's go down to little Arvox from Waves and find a setting we like. If I'm gonna die tonight, I'm bringing down the whole world with me. I'm just trying to live my life. And to make these sound better, we're just gonna pan left and right. And now we're gonna add auto-tune. Auto-tune, as you guys know, is always necessary to put on individual tracks. You can't put auto-tune on a, a bus. It just doesn't work that way. You need to tune the individual track. So we're gonna put auto-tune on here now. And we're gonna set the key, which we know to be D minor. And magically on our follower, we're gonna see that it now has auto-tune. And it's also set to D minor. And in fact, we could just play these back and hear what it sounds like as we turn the auto-tune to a more extreme value. If I'm going to die tonight, I'm bringing down the whole world with me. I'm just trying to live my life. So in real time, we're changing the auto-tune on multiple tracks, which to my knowledge is something that's never been possible before. Let's dive into the main interface. Now that you guys have a taste of the leader follower thing, we have our different effects, which we can organize up and down to change the order of them. We can even expand using this button, and now we have parallel processing. So one technique is to add a ton of compression, like this, but then to feed it in so it's not completely wet, we just do something like this, keeping the dry signal in there with a little bit of the super comp compressed signal. And if we want to add a new plugin, we just click there. If we go back, the browser does the same thing. It brings us to our browser. Here we have the group selection to make sure that the followers are on the same group as the leader that we want. Here we can name. So we could come up with a simple name, Niles New Chain. We can bypass it here just to hear what the difference sounds like. We can sync. Now, there are some cases where sync is necessary, and I'll give you an example. Although most of the time we're able to read the changes that you make, there are some parameters that we're not able to read, and an example would be, let's see, Endless Smile. This is a plugin for building up. We're gonna put it on here and change this guy and unfortunately, the follower is not going to be able to recognize that we made that change. So over here, it's on soft. And on the original, I think we had it set to some hard mode, right? There are going to be rare cases where we can't figure out what the changes that you've made. And that's why we have the sync button. It's a fail safe. 90% of the time we get it, but the sync button is a fail safe there for you. Now, if you like the chain that you've made, you can save it as a preset here. So I'll just save it and I'll be like, pretty cool chain. 
And now at any time in the future, we can just recall this chain. And instead of recalling one preset or two preset, we have the whole thing. So if you like an EQ into a compressor, into a different compressor, into auto-tune, whatever your deal is, you can recall the whole chain with the click of a button, which is super cool. I think that covers it for the main interface of Cashmere Chain. So let's look at the browser now. Inside the browser, one of the coolest features is that when you load your plugins, we're gonna organize them for you automatically. The loading of plugins, scanning of plugins, should happen automatically when you install. It happens in the background. You don't even need your DAW open. So it'll scan all of them. We'll put them into these categories that make sense. I click on delay. We see that we got the Echo Boy. We got the H delay. Uh, we have under distortion, the ones you'd expect. We found that the metadata that tells you the category of a plugin that comes with the plugin is often a little disappointing. So we went ahead and manually decided what categories we felt fit best for a plugin. Now, of course, you can also add your own category. So I might do something like sidechain. And then I look for my LFO tool. Here, let's just go to all and LFO tool. And we're gonna drag that into our new sidechain. And then you might have volume shaper and you can drag that in there too. Boom. And there we go. We have our own custom folder, which is super cool. Now, if you want, you can uh, select only to see VSTs, only VST3s, or only AUs when you're adding your plugins. But the cool thing is you can use a combination. So just because you open up Cashmere Chain as an audio unit, you can still add VST3 plugins, AUs, VSTs. It doesn't matter. At any point, no matter which version you open, all of your plugins are accessible to you, which is really cool. Now you can get a quick shortcut to see your plugin folder here. You can rescan all of your plugins. That happened automatically already, so don't need to do that. If you got new plugins, you can just click rescan new, and that'll pull up anything that you downloaded recently. I think that pretty much covers it. You've got your favorites, of course, you've got your custom categories, and you have the categories that we made for you to make your life easier. So that is the browser. Let's look at the macros now. If you wanna automate something in Cashmere Chain, the macros is how you do it. You pick a parameter, let's say we go to uh, uh, ProQ and Ah, there's too many things. So how are we going to figure this out? Is band one, band Q? What we do is, to make it easy, close the macros, open up ProQ3, we click this learn button. Now on the learn button, frequency, learn, frequency, and now when we go to the macros, we're going to see that these all pulled up. And we're going to assign this one to macro one, go back here, and if we want to change the frequency of that filter, all we have to do is edit this macro. And this allows us in Ableton to pull this up, change macro one, and look at that. If you look closely, you'll see that our follower is magically taking the value of the leader. You can put a little slope like this. I'm bringing down the whole world with me. I'm just trying to live my life. But everybody loves it looks like a little ghost is controlling the followers, like a little invisible hand. Anyway, I think that's really cool. That is how we handle automation. You open up your plugin, you click learn, you click the parameter that you want, then you go over here to macros, you assign it to a macro, and of course you can assign multiple effects to macros, right? Like we could assign uh, our vokes, we could assign the, the uh, compression, the amount of compression to happen there as well. And now by turning only one slider, we're gonna get uh, change in automation in both of those values. All right, guys, I think we've covered the basics, the fundamentals of Cashmere Chain, and hopefully I've opened your eyes to see the light and uh, how this can revolutionize your workflow. So thank you for watching. Go check it out on Plugin Boutique.